Thank you for listening to Forever Shelfmates. As a small podcast, we rely on word of mouth and ratings to gain new listeners. If you like the show, please be sure to tell your friends, family, landlord, colleagues, anyone who will listen, and leave us a five-star rating on the listening platform of your choice. Thank you, and enjoy the show. Welcome to Forever Shelfmates, everybody. I'm Cheryl, and I love books, and I love to talk about the books that I read. And I'm a librarian, so I have a job where I get to talk about all of the books that I love to read. I'm here with my co-librarian and BFF, Mirala. Hi, everybody. How convenient that you're a librarian, Cheryl. <laughs> I also happen to be a librarian. This episode, we're discussing a mystery thriller, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Before we get started, our usual warning, we will be spoiling the book, so if you haven't read it and don't want to have the plot ruined for you, pause this episode, run out to your favorite local indie bookstore or public or school library, and come back after you read it. Don't worry, we'll wait. Shelfmates, shelfmates, reading books is what we do. Shelfmates, shelfmates, and we talk about them too. I'm Cheryl. I like light and fluffy. Meryl, I like dark stuffy. Shelfmates, shelfmates, we're so glad that you're here to hear us. Let's dive in, shall we? Well, Cheryl, I imagine you had some nightmares last night finishing up this Okay, yeah, one. so we have to have, before we get started and dig into this book, I have to just tell you the little story of the fact that, like, when I read mystery thrillers, especially, like, murder mystery thrillers, I tend to get nightmares. And, like, when I was, like, a senior in high school, like, after I graduated, I got really into, like, Patricia Cornwell books, and I couldn't sleep with the light off. They were that scary. So I'd, like, read to, like, 2 in the morning, and then... <laughs> and then I would like be totally terrified to go to sleep and I'd have the weirdest dreams. And the two nights that I read this book, I had the weirdest dreams. Okay, what was last night? I don't really remember. I don't think in this one anyone told me one that I was a bad librarian or two was trying to kill me, but it was still <laughs> weird. And that was the first night's my nightmare was that everyone was telling me what a terrible librarian I was. Like everyone, students, teachers, the you know, administrators, my boss, everybody was telling me how terrible I was. And conveniently, someone was also trying to kill me. So just as a fair warning, if you too are bothered by this, don't read it at night. Right, yeah, and when you told me you had a bad dream that first night and you were only maybe one third of the way through, I was thinking to myself, oh my God, what, what she is going to be in for the second half of the book. Oh my God. So yeah. let's talk about this. This is a mystery thriller. It is by the author who wrote One of Us is Lying. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, One of Us is Lying is Karen McManus. Shut up. This is Holly Jackson, okay, different take author. That out. Um, <laughs> She rescinds that comment. Right. This is a mystery thriller that is similar oh, in tone to... Actually, yes. It is by Holly Jackson. It is by Holly Jackson, You're but wrong. that's actually like the first thing I wanted to talk about is like there's a plethora of books that are very similar okay, to this book. you don't know what you're talking about because you just said that this was not by Holly. I'm joking, but you're wrong. Okay, so <laughs> this is a... Okay, let's start again. We'll get into this in we'll a minute. This is a mystery thriller. It is by the author who wrote One of Us is Lying. No, so. it's not. One of Us is Lying is by Karen McManus. Okay. This is a mystery thriller. Yes, that's true. <laughs> this is a mystery thriller, and the author, Holly Jackson, has written other YA mysteries Actually, before. Actually, I don't think so. I'm looking right now, but I don't think so. I think this was her debut novel. Okay, fine. Whatever the hell. This is a mystery thriller. Yeah. All right. Here's what happens. This is here's her. It looks setup. like it's her debut novel. Okay. Here's the setup. Ready? You've got this pretty and popular girl. Her name is Andy Bell. All right. And she's from this small town, Fairview, in Connecticut. Penn, in Connecticut. And she was murdered. Okay. And the whole actually, that's not true. She's disappeared. There was no body. They never find her body. Okay. So they have no. They have no proof that she's dead. They don't have proof that she's dead. But everybody dead. assumes that she's everybody dead. Everybody in the town assumes that Andy Bell was murdered by her then boyfriend, who was Sal Singh. Okay, but that's not where the story begins. The story begins with Pippa, who's this really bright, geeky, smart girl, and she's in 12th grade, and she's doing her senior capstone project, which is like her thesis, you know, for high school, and she decides to do it on the Andy Bell mystery, what happened to Andy Bell 
um, because she does not believe that Andy Bell was in fact killed by Sal Singh. She doesn't think that that's the truth. So she decides to investigate this. So she decides to uncover the real truth behind this with some investigative journalism. If you're into that, this is the book for you. Um, and she ends up uncovering all of these secrets that somebody spooky in town desperately wants covered up, all right? So there are threats. There is danger. There is suspense. Also, trigger warning, there's a dog murder. Oh, you really just spoiled it now. Although, I yeah. wish that I had been aware of that before I started reading the book because when that happened, I had to take a break right. and like step yeah. away and be like, Max, I love you, and yeah. snuggle with my puppy for like a solid half hour. Yeah. There is a, the murder of a pet. There is, um, yeah, that's what I was going to get into next. The con <laughs> content warning. This book contains rape, drug use, violence, death of a pet. Also, there's, you know, a murder. So... That brings me to, who on earth is this book appropriate for? Everybody. No, I'm just I kidding. I don't know about that. <laughs> I would not hand this to anybody younger than ninth grade. So Andy Bell. Andy Bell is not a good person. Everyone has, like, put this halo over her head because she came from a, quote, good family, and she's blonde, and she's perfect, and everything. So they put, like, this, like fake aura of greatness around her but like once like Pip starts digging she finds out all of Andy's secrets and Andy was not a good person she was not a all. good girl at all um and actually so the first part of this book I think was pretty slow pretty cliche if you ask me all right Andy starts her project she goes Pip starts oh, I'm her sorry Pip starts her project she goes she goes to find um Sal Singh's brother to ask him questions and oh my goodness guess what happens it just so happens that the brother Ravi is attractive and he's so cute and they're gonna hit okay off. but to be fair there was not there, there there was no romance between them in the book there's oh like, my goodness are you kidding me the whole thing it builds up with their romance at the very end the description the whole thing is like their budding romance I didn't read into that, and I always look for the romance because romance is my jam. But I didn't you see didn't that. You didn't see that? Oh, I, I saw, saw that them they were like getting a crush on each well, other. Well, yeah, getting a crush on each other, but it definitely wasn't like if we're talking about like the A, B, and C plots. Like the main plot in this book is solving the mystery. Right. The second plot is like all the stuff that's happening to Pippa while while she's investigating. So like the death threats and whatever, and like very very at the, the bottom, there's like this her... underlying like. We might have a crush on each other, yeah, no, but it was, was not. Lot. It was. I, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Oh well, I thought. I mean, I thought it was like prominent in the book. I agree with you. I don't think it was like the first two points, but it was definitely a C point. They don't kiss. Like, okay, yeah. there's they, no kissing. There's no. There's no they don't go on a anything. date. Like, right. there's not. I. But I found it irritating because I just was like, oh, seriously, she's gonna have a crush. Is anyone on the surprised brother? about this? You don't like any of I the romance like stuff. Yeah, I don't like it. Okay, fine. So there was that. That was annoying. But then what got really annoying is she goes with her friends camping, um, and and it's dark, and it's raining, and then... Was it a dark and stormy night? I, I remember it was, it was dark, raining. but I don't remember the rain. Oh, maybe it wasn't raining. Okay, fine. It whatever, was, whatever. It could be. It was dark, and, and uh, I don't know, they hear a, a noise, and so the guys go to check it out, and everyone leaves the tent area, and there's a note that's placed in Andy's boot, and it's says and it's a note placed in Pip's boot and it says like stop digging Pippa or it says you know, yeah something like something that like, like stop that. I mean, that was just come on give me a break barf so I in the beginning I really wasn't impressed but then things start to pick up and get complicated and um she meets a host of sketchy characters well, that's because Andy's life was super sketchy. Right. And all of her little secrets start coming out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. And like she was... She a drug was, dealer. She was a drug dealer. Um, she was a drug dealer, and she also was a bully. Yeah, she, like, bullies uh, one of the girls at school. She bullies her little sister. She's not very nice to her friends. Um... But Sal doesn't see any of this. 
It's unclear sort of what Sal sees and what Sal ignores in in yeah. in that time. So Pippa's doing this research five years after Andy's disappearance, and she has decided to sort of dig a little bit deeper. And so she gets she gets more out of Andy's friends than the police were able to at the time. And so it sort of comes out also that Andy had had this relationship with a mysterious older man. And there's a question of how, who that is and who had, who had motive to kill her. Because everybody assumes that she's dead, even though no body is ever found. Right. Um, it, it's important to note the reason everybody thinks that Sal did it is because Andy's blood was found like on the trunk or in the trunk of his car. Her, I think her, it's her, her car, car. Which was abandoned on the side of the road. But we're also missing the really important part of why everyone thinks Sal did it, which is two days after Andy goes missing, Sal is found dead by an apparent suicide. In the woods. In the woods. When, and, and he sends a suicide text to his father saying, it was me, I did it. Right. And so everyone just assumes, assumes that, okay, well, a case he closed. definitely did it. But that's not what Andy thinks. I'm, ugh, Pippa. Why do I keep calling Pippa Andy? It's annoying. God, yeah. Marilyn. Yes. So now I need to bring up this. Before we talk about who you suspected did what, um, because there were a lot of twists and turns and thinking somebody did something and this person is guilty and this person is not. I would like to point out Pippa is a really bright girl, Okay. She's going to, she's applying to Columbia, and um, she's making headway in this mystery that nobody was able to make before. And, but she does a lot of reckless, stupid things. Like She is a teenager. Okay, well, I, then maybe that was well-written, because I'll start. Going up, into, going up into Max Hastings' bedroom, right, when you think he might be the murderer, going up into his bedroom alone, Dumb, right? Dumb. I, I don't disagree. Right? I mean, Pippa made a lot of really interesting choices about, like, going after people she thought might be murderers when really she should have handed the investigation over to the police. Right. Spying on a drug dealer in, where was it? A the subway? A train, the the train, train station. Sta- not the train station. It was the gas station, like, next to the train station Sending or something. Sending him text messages from her car to see if he would answer his phone. Or she, she called To figure it out if it was oh him. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it was so crazy. But the craziest thing of all that she does is when she's fairly certain that Mr. Ward, who is the father of her best friend and her teacher – or he, he is a teacher at the school, yeah. when she's fairly certain that Mr. Ward is the one who killed Andy Bell, she drives to the secret house where she thinks mm-hmm. that he has Andy. Actually, he doesn't, she doesn't think that he killed her. She thinks that he's hiding her, that she's kidnapped. She drives to Mr. Ward's house to confront him alone. That, to me, was just like, that was... You know, you have to and suspend. at least some of the other places, she like tells Ravi she's like going off to do something, and so like somebody knows where she is. But let, like that last one, that was not. She believable. does not tell anybody where she's going, right. and it's by pure happenstance that Ravi was smart enough to turn on the like iPhone, like Find My Friends app or whatever, right. so they can trace her cell phone. So that's how they figure out where she is. Right. Also, then she does call nine one one before she walks into the house. She does, but when she sees him and she says, "You have to tell me everything because the police are on their way." Well, like, what's to stop him from, like, why did he believe her? You know, like, I, I didn't find that part believable. Because if I had been confronted as Mr. Ward, I wouldn't have said, oh, oh, Pippa, yes, indeed, I am, I am bad. I am the person who did the wrong thing. And here's the whole story of what unfolded and why. Like, that was just, that was annoying. I mean, but that's, that's just, like, mysteries go, essential. I like, I mean, that's the James Bond, like, villain problem, right? You've got, like, James Bond hanging over a pit of, like, snakes with venom or something and he's like and and then you spill out your whole plan to destroy the right, world thinking that like james bond's gonna die and he's not gonna stop you but let's be real james bond is gonna get out of that right. kill the snakes right. and stop you yeah, it so, was like, very james bond that ending was very james bond but there were some crazy twists after that can i can i tell you that i um so here's my problem yeah as a reader of mysteries as I mentioned earlier and also I love this little tv show called Veronica Mars oh yeah um I wasn't 
really surprised by the book right. because this book honestly has to have been an homage to Veronica Mars. It will shock me if Holly Jackson was not writing this in part as an homage to Veronica Mars. There's like half the plot I feel came like directly from season one of Veronica Mars okay. because but what was written first Veronica Mars came out I believe in like either the late 90s the early aughts it stars Kristen Bell okay. who's amazing um and it's like very similar in plot mm -hmm. in fact there's a character in Veronica Mars called Weevil mm -hmm. and there's a Weevil Road like the place where like they oh. think that she was abducted was Weevil Road okay. and I'm like well, that's, that's, probably... that's there for the Veronica Mars fans yeah, that's it, a wink and a nudge it probably is so like when we got to the end I was like because I've watched season one and I and I don't know if I want to spoil it right now because it's such a great show but it's very it's very similar okay and so the ending to the book was not as surprising to me the ending of the book when, okay, that got to be overkill. When Becca drags Andy, it, it, okay, so the so, end so is, let's just say spoilers now spoilers. that we've, we've now sort of said who spoilers. that. Spoilers, Becca, who's her sister, killed her and dumped her in a well, okay. tank. So she didn't she really kill her. Kill she her. let her die yeah. choking on her own throw up. But when, There are lots of trigger warnings in this yeah. book. She, <laughs> I mean, it's she, a murder mystery. When... Andy, no, when Becca is dragging Pippa back into the woods to try to kill her, that was just such an eye roll moment for me. Like, really? You're going to do this? It was just, oh, too much. Because everybody dies in the woods. It was, that was. I don't think, no, so I, here's, this book is so popular that it took me forever to get it. So I only finished it like last night. Yeah. Like late, not Why late last isn't night. Why is it so popular? Well, Hang on, let me finish my thought, and then we'll go back to that. So, like, this book was so popular that I couldn't get it. So I remember the, sort of the end, because I was like, what? So Mr. Ward and Andy have a confrontation at his house where he says, I'm not going to be black. Not Andy. Yes, uh, Andy. Oh, oh, Andy, yes. Um, and she, he pushes her, and she falls and hits her head. So she's got, like, a brain injury, and she's bleeding from her head. And Andy somehow makes it back to her house where she's confronted by Becca and – they have a disagreement because Andy's a terrible person and Becca doesn't realize that Andy's already injured mm -hmm. and is bleeding and I think also pushes her and she falls down and she starts vomiting and Becca doesn't do anything and so Becca's laying on her back mm -hmm. and she's vomiting and she's and Andy's so laying. and I'm sorry Andy's laying and she chokes on her a moment that's how she dies so like Becca doesn't like kill her but doesn't help her when she's clearly dying right. and then and, and then she dead. dumps the body. And then she dumps the body. So she doesn't, like, take her out to the woods to kill her. She's already dead. She takes her out to, like, hide her somewhere so that nobody finds the body. What impressed me was where she dumped the body because in five years there's been no no question that the body has never been found, which is why it's a mystery of whether she's alive or not, which is part of the Mr. Ward part of the mystery. Yeah, and Mr. Ward, okay, so the other thing with killing people in the woods, Mr. Ward, <laughs> <laughs> he... He is really frightened when when um, Andy vanishes after her head injury because he's worried that she's going to go. Uh, well, he's worried that possibly she's gone off and died somewhere, and 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 she'll implicate him. Um, and she he's worried that she'll you know tell everybody that he was having a sexual relationship with her, whatever reason. So, um, he, and then especially after he hears so, about Sal's suicide I think he's still really concerned that she's gonna come back no no that's not what happens he he goes to try to frame Sal. he finds Sal oh that's right he is he, the murderer I'm so yeah, sorry he's he, the murderer it's very confusing but so he, so hang on can we go back yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. okay so I made a mistake because I forgot about that part even though I totally told Jonathan exactly what happened um so after the confrontation where Mr. Ford pushes Andy Andy falls hits her head she leaves Mr. Ward is like freaked out that, you know, Andy's gonna die. It's gonna be his fault. She's covered in his like DNA and stuff like that. So they'll be able to like link it back to him. And so he decides he has to figure out how to frame somebody else. So when Becca's, Becca, Andy is missing, he goes and he's a teacher. So he's got relationships with all the students. And Sal, I think, reaches out to him. Does Sal call him on the I phone? can't remember now. Sal is her boyfriend, and, and somehow he gets in touch with Sal because Sal is desperately looking for Andy and is worried about her, and um, gets 
Sal to come over and have a cup of tea, I think. And then yeah, he feeds, feeds him um, sleeping pills. Sleeping pills, and then drags him into the woods, and then kills covers, him. Covers but, his head let's with Let's not a, talk about oh, that. Sorry. It's it, really gruesome. It's on, it's on page. So, like, if yeah. that is something you're sensitive to, maybe yeah. don't read this book, because they, he murders him on page. Yeah, and it's it's really gruesome. That, that, that was... I had a harder time with that than the death of the dog. Um, but, you know, what? No, the, the dog's death is way worse. Okay, well. That does not happen on page, though. You only hear about it later. The right. dog does not die on page. Becca okay. Bell kills the dog because she, so Pippa's been getting threats, and she's been getting threats both from Mr. Ward. You don't know. She's been getting all of these threats, and you think they're from the same person, which is why it takes a while for her to figure out there are two separate Criminals. Cur- yes, killers out right. there. So she's been getting threats from Mr. Ward, but she's also been getting threats from Becca. And so Becca kidnaps her dog um, and says, get rid of all of the evidence that you have for your project, all of the you know interviews you've had, all of your notes and everything like that, and I'll release your dog. And so, of course, Pippa does that because she loves the dog. And Becca says, <laughs> later on when, when Pippa confronts her, she says, well, I let the dog go. It's not my fault if the dog fell in the river and drowned. And it's sad. So it doesn't happen on page. But so that's like that two, was so heartbreaking it, yeah, for but me. It, it's two times that Becca kind of inadvertently lets someone die. Her sister and Barney the dog. It's interesting that she does that twice. I think that, like, and it's very interesting because there are a lot of characters in the book who are very passive and for a murder mystery, like, you don't expect the murderer to be quite so passive. Because right. you've got, there's so many secrets that get revealed that, like, if we if we were to talk about all the secrets that get revealed, we'd here, be here for, like, right. another, like, three hours. But needless to say, a lot of these things happen because good people do nothing. And so Becca's crime is not so much that she murders her sister, but that she doesn't help her sister when she has the opportunity. And that, to me, was sort of heartbreaking. Right. And there's a reason she doesn't. And and a lot of the characters, it illustrates the, the different... Nothing is black and white here. It's not clear, oh, for sure, this person is 100% evil. You get to see the different motivations and causes and problems. I mean, there's a reason why Andy is the horrible human being she is. And you get to see that, and you can empathize to some extent with her. Even Mr. Ward, he does atrocious things but he also just lost his wife and Andy was listening to him and making him feel good and less lonely and like I'm not saying that what he did was right but you can also kind of see another side of him Um, so that's what's interesting in this there are no 100% villains and when you start out Pippa's this very I like idealistic I'm going to solve this crime kind of person and she kind of descends a little bit into like obsessiveness because at the beginning she's like I really want to do this but I also need to do my college applications and I have these friends that I like hanging out with like she seems to have this life and as the book goes on and she gets further and further into the mystery she like kind of descends into this like obsessiveness like the only thing she has in her life by the end of the book is this mystery she doesn't seem to hang out with her friends she barely gets her college application in on time she spends the whole time writing and rewriting her college application. Um, She doesn't spend time with her family. She's essentially lying to her family about all the things she's doing. Um, And it's just, you sort of watch this and it's, it's hard to watch her go from this person who, who's full of life to be like this, like one note, I must do this type person. Yeah. 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 It is kind of creepy. Um, can we talk for a minute about one of the excellent features of this book? Okay. Which one of my favorite things about this book is the suspense that is triggered by technology. <laughs> I think that Holly Jackson is such a master of this. The way that she'll create suspenseful moments, she'll, she'll interweave it with technology. For example, um, Pippa had tracked the printing uh, oh my god, I want to know if that's real. Right. I want to so, know if that's a real so thing. So Pippa at one point was suspecting that maybe Naomi, who was her best friend's sister, who is Mr. Ward's daughter, might know something about Andy or might be communicating with someone involved. And so she decides that she is going to 
hack into the ward's computer and their printer and so that she can have a record of every single page. It doesn't even seem like it's a hack. It seems like hack. you it's like, like you, can you can go in and save every print job that goes right. from the computer and like what it is. And she gets notified of No, 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 she doesn't. She, she puts it on. So um, what is it exactly? She gets a she makes it so that she can see whatever is getting printed from the ward's computer. So what she does cuz so Mr. Ward has two daughters, Naomi and Kara, and Kara is Pippa's best friend. So Pippa asks Kara if she can use her computer for like a completely innocuous thing and while she's on the computer like goes into like printer settings and sets it up that the printer will save whatever's printed so that she'll get like a list so she can go in later and look at a list that everything is printed and so she doesn't get notified because then later when she wants to find out if one of the um the threatening notes is coming from somebody in the ward family she once again asks kara to use the computer opens up this list and is able to see print jobs where where the, what has been printed on their printer well, which i thought was really the, cool she can see the print jobs but she can't see the content unless so then she, she prints presses it. print oh my gosh yeah and the scene where she's pressing print and you're waiting for that paper to come out of the printer was just nail biting that was amazing the other amazing part was when um when they are when when uh, Pippa and Ravi, they've hidden Pippa hid her phone in Mr. Ward's car with the GPS on. Yeah, the Find and My Friend the Find app. Find My Friend app, and they suspect she suspects that Mr. Ward is going to go um, is not tutoring after school like he claims to be that he's probably doing something evil um, and maybe relating to the Andy Bell case which he is because he starts driving in a completely different direction and she is like they're pressing refresh on the find my friend app so that she can see where he's driving to and then and the scene where she's like asking Kara like what's that house you used to live in right and right, you're like right. oh my god he's going to the house right. he's going to he's the house he's going to the house and Man, like, okay, tell me this. In this show that you're talking about, was there that crazy twist that, um, so the, the crazy twist in this book is that, okay, we discover that it's Mr. Ward. By the way, I suspected him in the beginning, so this wasn't a total shock to me. Um, but we, we, we see that it's Mr. Ward, and he, he clearly, he, he has a girl in his house who he kidnapped, but it's not Andy Bell. She thinks she's Andy Bell. She's a confused, random blonde girl who well, found and he on the has, street. Well, and he thinks that she's Andy Bell because it makes him feel better to think that he didn't kill Andy. Yeah. Well, that part Whatever. was crazy because you think everything's resolved, and then you're like, oh, wait, no. But this is a this is not actually Andy who he kidnapped. Well, where is Andy? See, we told you that if we wanted to talk about all of the secrets that are dropped, we'd be here for another three hours. It's so really, it's complex. It gets very complex. And I think that's maybe why, maybe that's why it's so successful, because there are a lot of twists and turns near the second half of the book. It's not the kind of book that you necessarily want to read if it's been ruined. But it is the kind of book, or like, you, you don't want to read it knowing who the killers are. But it is worth, like, I would reread this now, knowing what I know. And look for all the little places she may have dropped I, clues. Yeah, I would. I, I might reread it. I picked this book up literally two days ago, and I didn't want to put it down. Also because I was having nightmares while reading it because right, it was right. so good. Like, would you agree you didn't want to put it down more towards the middle of it? It starts out slower. It's so not... you thought that, I, I remember seeing that you said that, or that you talked to me about it while I was still reading it, I didn't find that. And it could be that I, like, before this book, I'm reading this other book that's really slow. <laughs> and so this one was actually way more engaging to me. Yeah. Also, I like the genre of mystery. I have historically been more into mysteries than I currently am. So I'm used to sort of the, like, introduction. And also, there are other genres that sort of start out slower like we've done our fantasy genre That's at this true. point and fantasy also starts out slow because you have to do all that world building right. and so in in mystery it's not world building necessarily but you have to set the scene right, right. like why do we care what happened to andy right. why do we care like what were the circumstances in which right. she disappeared and to do that you have to set up a lot of background and i guess maybe i just got used to it mm -hmm. i don't know but for me it wasn't as slow as i think it was for you well but it did pick up and i agree with you at 
you know, I couldn't put it down no. in the end. Well, actually, I could put it down because I was listening to it. It's an audiobook, actually, I'm so. curious because <laughs> in the book, so the book is really great because it has different, like, media in it, too. So you have points where you're listening to inter. I mean, the interviews yeah. are fine. She has transcripts of interviews because mm -hmm. she's keeping a log for her project, but she has she makes a murder map at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Later on, she finds, she takes pictures of, um, she finds Andy's date book, mm -hmm. and she takes pictures. So I was like curious how that translated into an audiobook. Um, I think pretty seamlessly. It was really interesting, it was engaging. There were a lot of different points, there were a lot of different voices. When she did the telephone interviews, they had the little ring, ring sound, and they had, the, the person's voice sounded tinny, like they were actually on the telephone. Um, and Which, given so much of us use phones these days for actual like talking on a telephone, right? Exactly. Um, I I thought it was a very engaging way to I to present a story. Yeah. And maybe that's why it's so popular. Well, so this is one of the things that I wanted to talk about because also while reading this book, um, and trying to come up with the one because this was your suggestion for our mystery genre month. Right. And I was trying to come up with a book that I wanted to present as my as my option. And the problem is there are so many books that are so similar to this book right. that I was having a hard time thinking of it because contemporary with this book, there's also Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. That's which is the similar. one I was thinking about. Truly it's, Devious. It's very, it's very similar. similar. You've yes. also got Sadie by, I think it's Courtney Summer, also very similar. So like, then you've got One of Us is Lying, which is also very similar. Like, mm -hmm. There seems to be this like resurgence of these like murder mysteries in YA that seem to be extremely popular. And so I don't know whether it's just young people are more interested in getting outside of real life because I think of books as more of escapism. God, I hope this isn't somebody's real life. That's very, very heartbreaking if it is. But there's a lot of books very similar to this one. And so it just seems to be something that a lot of teens must be reading now and be very into. Well, it, it seems like all, what do they all have in common? They all feature kind of middle, upper middle class um, girls who are- Mostly white. Mostly white who are well-educated, they're, you know, applying to top colleges and whatnot, um, and, and, and I feel like there is a kind of trashy candy element to these kinds of mysteries, which, I, you know, I don't <laughs> disagree with that. Yeah. I, I don't mind the... The trashy uh, candy. That's okay. Uh, there's, there is no judgment here on what you choose to read. Trashy candy is perfectly acceptable, I, and I love it. I didn't mind having trashy candy. I don't mind a good dose of trashy candy now and then. This book wasn't really what I thought it was going to be, but I think I ended up picking something that you actually enjoyed. I did actually enjoy it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I did like it. The problem is, is that I did research on the sequels to this book, and I have to say, based on reading the summaries and some of the people's um, reviews of it, I'm not going to pick up books two and three. Mm -hmm. um, mostly, mostly because I want to be able to sleep at night, <laughs> okay. and I'm real concerned that if I pick up books two and three, I will not be able to sleep at night. Yeah. So, it, and this was this was gruesome. This this is a gruesome book. There's a lot. It of sort of it looks like in the second book, um, Pippa and Ravi turn this case into a podcast and then there's another disappearance in the in their town mm -hmm. um and more secrets are revealed mm -hmm. and then in the third book it gets even darker from what i've get from what i gathered in my goodreads stalking of these books last night after i finished this book mm -hmm. and so i think that like i'm gonna pass on reading the sequels of this one mostly because i just think that i need to have a good night's sleep right but it's and, and, and it's not that I wouldn't recommend right. them. It's just personally right. for me. Yeah, you know. And I wouldn't, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like you. If if a seventh grader came to me with this book and said I want to check this out, you know, I wouldn't say no, you can't check it out. But this is not something I would actively go seeking out children younger Which, than fourteen to get to. Do you to. know this is so? When I was putting this on my on my Goodreads list, it's actually this is a Black Eyed Susan for this year. So in Maryland, school, which is where we right? are. Um, we have a statewide book program for kids of all ages, and A Good Girl's Guide to Murder is on the nominees list for the 21-22 school year. Um, it's in the YA category, right? right? Grades so, 9 through 12. So 9 through 12, I mean 9, 10 through 12, but really anyone can participate in any, mm -hmm. in any um, 
what's the word I'm looking for, in any of the um, categories, I'm sorry, in any of the categories that they want. So, you know, you could give this to a seventh grader. I, I wouldn't stop a seventh grader from reading it, but I definitely would advise students checking it out to like, here's a, it's kind of gory and graphic. I mean, some kids are really into that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm not going to judge what, I don't judge what people read. You read what you want. <laughs> read what you want. All right, what else? Do you have anything um, else to say about it? I don't it? know. I just, I suspected Mr. Ward, and then there was that part where um, the author kind of deflects Mr. Ward, and you think, oh, well, no, it couldn't be. It couldn't be him because he's such a nice guy, and look, he's he says he doesn't know Andy, and... and um, okay, for one thing, everybody lies in this book. Right, everybody lies. But one of the most repulsive people who I really thought would be guilty of something much worse is Max Hastings. I'm not convinced he's not guilty of something worse. I mean, and I, from my internet stalking, um, the things he does in this book come up to bite him in the tush in the second book. Good, because he deserves a good tush bite. All right, I, I don't know what else there is to say about the I book. Think we're, I, think I think we, we did I think we've covered most yeah. of the plot. I mean, we've spoiled li all. We haven't spoiled we everything. Haven't spoiled, but the people presumably they've read it. I mean, if you haven't sort read of it, walked through it. I mean, if you haven't read it, and I don't think that, I mean, we definitely haven't spoiled everything, so there's definitely stuff to find out when you go back. In fact, we haven't talked about, let's say, like half of the characters in this book, because Pippa and Ravi are only two of the characters in the now times, right? They're investigating, but they have like a whole group of people around them. And then we've talked about Andy, and not that many of the people that were around her in her time. So we have Sal, her boyfriend, Mr. Ward, her teacher. Kara, slash, her best friend. No, not Kara. It's Nayo. No. Um, God, I don't remember her best friend's name. Emma and of, Chloe. Emma, Emma and Chloe, Chloe. And there's a bunch of guy friends she hangs yeah. out. There were a lot of extraneous characters. There were characters a lot here. of characters. There are a lot of names. So like, we definitely have not spoiled the entirety no. of this book. So if going anything, to read it, if, you will right. you will find out more. I mean, if anything, we've just confused the heck out of you. So I mean, if you haven't read it, or if you have read it, and you want to come and talk to us about it, you can definitely hit us up on our Instagram and like comment on this book. We would love to talk to all of you about what you thought about this book. At the same time, all at once. A cacophonous cacophony. Just don't send us threatening messages. <laughs> That's all we have for you about A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Be sure to check out our next episode when it gets released on July 15th. See you next time! Forever Shelfmates is produced in collaboration with an incredible team of amazing people. Our logo was designed by Mira Lacassus and Miriam Goldell. Our theme song was written by Mira Lacassus and Noah Sosky and was performed by Abby Chessman. Our producer is Aaron Adams' Benevolent Overlord, and our show is hosted by Mira Lacassus and me, Cheryl Fox Strasberg. That's all we have for you this time. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Forever Shelfmates. That's the number four Ever Shelfmates for the most up to date news on production. Next time, we will be reading The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Thank you for listening.